Hello, and welcome to Thunder and Film. I'm sorry guys, I just I just had to do it. But yes, welcome to Blender and Film, a YouTube channel where I use Blender for pretty much all of my film CGI techniques, um, whether it be uh, lens flares like we're doing today, um, or maybe just putting something in a scene, or changing the color of a scene if I'm just testing my camera out. But yeah, today we're doing lens flares. So I have a light set up right here which is generating a lens flare right now. And we're going to do something like this. We're not You know, you could do in Blender just a normal looking lens flare, just a blue line across um, which a lot of times anamorphic lenses will do. But they're not nearly as interesting as something like you'd see in the Star Trek movies and they've got all these broken up lines across the screen. Those look a lot cooler in my opinion. So we're going to do something like that today. Yeah, this is going to be a bit of a medium difficulty project. Um, we're going to have to do some motion tracking. Um, so then you can apply it to any lights or whatever you want to put it in your scene. If it's just emanating from somewhere off in space, you can do that. If you know a little bit about Blender, you should be able to follow along. If you know something about motion tracking, then you should be able to follow along pretty nicely. But without further ado, I'll stop talking and get to it. Okay, so here we are in Blender, and we're just going to delete all of this from the scene. And we're going to need to be in the blend, uh, Cycle Render. Cycles Render and hit 5 to go to orthographic view it's, I just find it a lot easier to work in that remember to set your resolution up to 100 when you uh, when you render it okay so what we're gonna do first is we're going to add I'm not gonna do any of the uh, shortcuts or anything like I did in the last video um, you because you can you know, I'm pretty sure if you know how to use Blender, you should know how how to add some of these things. But add a, let's see, we're going to take a, or let's see, ah, here they are, empty, plain axis. And what we're going to do is go to the top view, so hit 7 on your number pad. And we're going to add a circle hit tab and F to fill it in and then scale it down alright so now we need to give this a property uh, a material so we're gonna give it an emission set that all the way up to white and then the strength we're gonna set this to be 5 okay so go back to your top view and add the camera because we deleted that alright so now you have let's scale this down a little bit more okay so now you have your circle which is going to be your light and the empty so what you want to do this empty I'm just leaving it here for reference this is going to be the motion track um, empty when you if you motion track a scene then you're gonna put uh, it's gonna put an empty in there and then you're gonna take all of these this, you're going to take the circle and then you're going to parent it to that motion track. This, we're not going to use this until we motion track. So actually we could just delete it. So just take the circle and remember to have your background set to completely black. Okay? So now what we need to do is uh, we'll render this out real quick. Just so you can see it's just a black dot right there. okay so now what we need to do is make a new scene and we'll just do full copy because it's gonna be easier so now we see scene one and we're gonna call this the actual well actually here we'll just call this the lens flare Street. my speakers just turned off they always pop like that Okay, so we'll take the first one and we'll name it Light. 
Okay. So now we take the circle, um, and we'll see. We can rename this one Light, just so we know uh, when we go later to get the streaks, we need it to parent to that. So then when we motion track, we can parent it, parent the circle or the light to the empty. But let's go to the lens flare streak, and we need to delete this one. And we will add a plane, and then scale it down on the Y, and the X, just a little bit. And we'll give it the same property as this one. Now you may have saw two there, that's because we uh, duplicated the scene, so it duplicated the uh, light, and it had the material, but we're just going to use the material on the... Um, the streaks. I don't know what you would call these. Oh. Okay. So now we need to duplicate this and just move them around kind of just in the scene. Okay, that should be good. So now what we need to do is we need to go to the constraints, add object constraint, and copy location to. Actually, before we do that, before we add all these in, We'll do it to this one so that we have them to work with. It'll be a lot less tedious. Okay, so target, you need to set that to the light. And that means wherever the light is going to move, wherever the light moves, these are going to follow or do what we want them to here. So deselect the X and the Y, and then deselect the Y and the Z. Okay, so now what we need to do is tell it to invert the X and offset. So now, when we move the light, this moves with it. And you can see it's moved over here. That's because it's inverted. It's going to travel in the opposite direction. Okay. So now we can change the influence of how much it moves. And this is based on this Y axis. So if you turn it all the way to zero, it's just going to move up and down and stay right there. Or is it? I believe it's on this one. But it's according according to how much influence you have, it moves around the scene. So now we're going to duplicate this and remember to offset the Y, otherwise you won't be able to move it like you want on the vertical. So just take these and move them around and just give them different uh, amounts of influence on the X okay so now let's take this light and we'll hit control L and that will link the object to scene light fl uh, lens flare okay so now we can see it and if we move it around you can see it moves all of these around with it. Okay? But some of these are moving a little bit too much, so let's turn this way down. Uh, that one's good. Turn this down. Okay, so now we select the light, and you can see it moves around. But it's moving in an odd way, because it's running too far out. That's because all of these are inverted. So if we turn some of these off, uh, say this one and this one, you can now see it looks a little bit more realistic because it's moving with the light. See? It's actually, yeah, it's just going to reset. But let's turn, no, that one. Is it that one? One of these is... Ah, there it is. I think that's it. Yeah, this one's not moving as much as I would like it to. So yeah, just play around with the values and... Whoa, what happened there? I think my mouse went off screen. But these are going to be the... Uh... I don't know what you would call them, but... We're just going to call them the... 
the flare elements. Okay, so now we can delete the light from the scene because it's already parented to the original light that was just a link. So we could drag it around on here and see. So now what we need to do is we'll just position this a little bit over here. And we go to the compositing, use nodes, backdrop, and we'll get rid of these. And if you saw my original tutorials, you should know how to do that. I'm trying not to make this boring for those of you who do know how to how to use Blender. All right, so we duplicate the scene and set this one to the lens flare streak, and we'll add a viewer, and we'll just separate this one so we can only have one point to go in. Because I found so many times that I would render the scene, but it was only attached to the viewer, so it was just rendering out black. All right. So now we need to add a mix node, add, okay, and now quickly render the scene. And you can see that we've now got, see there's the light right there, we'll back this out. There's the light and these are all the, the elements. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to add the actual flaring. So go to the filter and glare, and we'll select, this one is just the light, um, iterations 5, turn this to high, and then we'll set this to something like 6, threshold of 0, duplicate this 3 times, change this number up to, uh, let's say 3, and then this one to 10 angle this and then we'll make this one a little bit longer this one smaller and we'll leave that one there so now once it uh, finishes compositing you're gonna have this bright uh, it looks like someone's shining a flashlight straight into the lens oh, it's just lots of um, light flares but not the uh, lens flares like the anamorphic lens flares Why are you taking this long? It's probably because it's set to the high. Yeah, that'd probably be it. You know, let's set these to low just so it can handle it a little bit better. There we go. All right, so you can see that um, it's got these kind of um, I don't know what what to call those, but that comes from the color modulation. So we'll turn that all the way to zero on all of them. Okay, so now we have a bright light. Alright, so now what we need to do is take the render layers, uh, the bottom one, the uh, flare elements, and we need to add a glare to them, and set this to, no, set this to high, streaks 2, threshold 0, iterations 5, and then we need to add a blur node. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take them and it's just going to turn them into like that. It's just going to turn them into, uh, um, well, streaks of light. Uh, set the X to uh, 100. Got that for now. And set the blur to fast Gaussian. Actually, we'll take the Y and put it to like a 3 just to blur the edges up just a little bit. See, now we have this broken up kind of lens flare, but this is just black and white, and that looks boring. So let's add some color. 
and color balance and we'll do that for this one up here too I live right next to train tracks so <laughs> there's the trains every time I'm recording alright so we'll take this on the flare streets and we'll thank you thank you yes thank you very much I I know you enjoy them I know you enjoy the tutorials thank you thank you that's enough thank you okay so now I said thank you yes I know you appreciate them thank you we can take uh, this and we'll just turn all these up we'll leave this one alone for now and that's gonna make these more blue Okay, so now it's done. Actually, we need to take this one up too. No, actually, what it's doing is it's, it's just coloring the flares. So let's actually put it. Ah, what did that do? Okay, let's put it before that so it colors the actual elements and it'll give it a little bit better look see there you go so now it's actually kind of blue and we'll turn these up okay so you see how it's kind of got that look to it um, actually well, another thing we can do is we can actually make the uh, light flares emit a bluish color and that will help with that alright so now we need to render it again just so it updates the changes didn't look like it did a whole lot did it well I can kinda see it you may not be able to see it see but that helps a whole lot because the light it's actually emitting is blue so let's take these down just a hair just to make it less um, odd looking because <laughs> they see that looks a lot better alright so now we need to give the light a little bit color uh, so let's give it just a hint of blue and just a hint of yellow just so it actually looks like a light see alright now what we need to do is add another flare or sorry glare glare node and plug it into the light and we'll take another add we're done with this right now and run this to there and we'll turn this one to ghosts and turn that to high iterations actually no we'll leave it at three and the threshold is zero. Now this will give us the uh, looks like uh, yeah see right there it looks like the many lens uh, lens components uh, yeah and we'll take this and turn the factor up to three and that's just gonna amplify the effect See, now we got an even brighter light. <laughs> Alright. So, actually, let's do another one. Make the threshold a little higher, but we'll make this a four. And that's just going to give us a little bit more of a. Uh, there's going to be a lot more dots on the screen. So now this will follow around the light, whereas these glare will only follow around the uh, the lens flare component elements there we go see look at this doesn't that look nice now if you wanted you could even take some of these and blur them in different ways uh, to make I don't know oval shapes or whatever but I like it like this okay and we'll give them just a little bit of color color balance and we'll just make them just a bit blue 
just so it kind of follows. Because like how anamorphic lenses work is they have a uh, they stretch the image, um, or they compress it um, horizontally, and then you stretch it out back in post, and it gives you that aspect ratio. And they have a blue coating on the front, which makes the a lot of the lens flares blue. So I'm keeping with that in the uh, coloring. Okay, so that's a really basic one. But another thing that helps sell it is a lot of times you want to do... Actually, we'll just copy the light. Okay, so now that's copied. And we're going to delete this light. And we're going to add another plane. Scale it on the Y. and add the object constraints, copy location, copy location and target the light and the light now the X and the Z check them off and then the Y and Z and invert the Y and invert the X so now this is going to follow around um, on the opposite and this is going to be in the opposite spot of the light which you can kind of see that blue line there so actually let's scale this on the Y no yeah here we go scale this on the Y and then scale it on the X now this is gonna be kind of like the ghost um, node that we put in but it's gonna be just a blue streak which a lot of the uh, anamorphic lenses have so now we're gonna duplicate this and scale it on the X and then influence the Y, turn that down, and influence on the X, turn that down. And scale it on the X a little bit more, scale it down. So now, when we move the light, Control L to link it there, light 01, and we're actually going to rename this to uh, anamorphic. Spell it right, yeah. Ghost. Okay, so now if we move this around, you can see those streaks move around with it. And if we go to the center, it does that too. Okay, so now we can delete that from the scene. And now we need to go back into the compositing and add, we'll take this one, add a new render layer and set that to the anamorphic ghost and no, we'll take this one because this one's at a 1 add them together but we haven't rendered them so it's not going to show up so before we render them we need to give them of course materials so we're going to use let's see no, we're going to use these because these are going to be the same color well so we're going to make them a little bit darker but we need them emitting a blue light and those work just fine so now we go to the default um, actually let's go to the compositing and we'll render this out so we can render the scenes you can see them all loading and now once it does all the compositing Come on. There we go. See, now we have these streaks in here. So what we're going to do, we need to give these a little bit more character. We need to add... Okay, actually, let's just take the streak and the blur from here. And we'll use these. But what we need to do is we need to turn this way, way up. Okay. So now this is going to flare out in much the same way as these, but it's going to behave like these, the uh, ghosts. I don't know if you can see my mouse. I, f I don't know if I turn that back on. Okay. So now we need to give it color. Uh, color balance 
and we need to give it a really dark blue a really intense blue so now when this loads there we go actually we need to make that one a little bit smaller so go to the anamorphic ghost and this one needs to go way smaller okay no actually we need to go back to here and no compositing thank you okay so we render this out and what it's going to hopefully do if it does it right or if I did it right it's going to make the kind of ghost if ghost node effect but in a fashion that's similar to an anamorphic lens flare that was quick okay so you can see there it's moving around but it's looked too strong so we're gonna turn the factor down <clears throat> excuse me we're gonna turn the factor down and actually we need to turn it down to something more like that so two, 0.25 just to make it an easy number. And once it loads, there. So now it's it's not as pronounced, but it's still a little too bright. So let's turn it to 0 0.1. And this is just going to make it yeah, less pronounced so that it's not, uh, it needs to be a, a subtle effect. There we go. See, that's still, still a little bit too bright for some reason. That's probably because I had the value set, the emission value set to 5. So, let's turn this to 0 0.025. See how that one looks. There we go. See, that one looks a lot better. All right. So now we'll just do a render of this. So we can see what it looks like. Alright, so it's rendered out, and this is what it looks like. It looks pretty good on its own, right? Okay, well now we need to uh, put it into a video. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the motion tracking. And we're going to... Uh, we'll just leave that. Open up a clip. Um, this is where I have all my videos saved. So this is the intro video. We need to set scene. More train fans, yay! Okay, so. I know you appreciate them, thank you. So. Yeah, there's me setting it up. And the audio cue. Yeah, that was my goodness, that's so funny. Thank you, I know you appreciate them. But I am in the middle of one. Okay, so yeah, we're just going to leave it with that because that looks hilarious. Okay, so we're just going to add a motion tracker here. And it's not going to move because this is stationary. But if you were to motion track, just motion track your lights. And because it's not moving, we're just going to jump ahead. But if it were moved, you can look up other tutorials on motion tracking. Link empty to track. Okay, so now we need to go to the default. Okay, so actually selection cursor to selected and then selection to cursor and now we're going to take the light which everything is uh, parented to or which it moves 
according to how the light moves and we're going to take the light and we're going to parent it to the empty so now when the empty moves in your in mine it's stationary but in yours it will move around if you're shooting handheld video or whatever but it will move around and the light is parented to the empty so it will it and the uh, flare elements will move accordingly so now what we need to do is we need to render this out so now all the elements have moved accordingly and once it composites them we'll be able to see uh, the flare in that position and then we can overlay or add the footage I should say see there we go alright so now what we need to do is add our footage so let's take these and actually we'll just take all of these select these and I think it's control G no select how do I add them to a group is it shift G no what is it node group make group control G G. Huh. I guess it can't add them in a group for some reason. Oh, that's probably because of the render layers. Okay, we'll just take these and control G. Okay, so now this is our lens flare. I spelled that wrong. <laughs> lens flare. Okay. So now we can move all of these. This is just so that I have room to work with the footage. So we need to input the movie clip. And we've already well, it's selected apparently that one. Okay, so color mix, add, and then add the movie clip. So now it's going to composite the footage onto. Uh, uh, it's going to composite the lens flare onto the footage. I said it's going to composite. There we go. See, now it looks kind of okay, but this is a little bit too s the uh, the flare coming off the light. The I don't know what you would call these. Lens burst, I'll call them that. <laughs> They're a little bit too small, so we'll turn these way, way up. There, try that. Now it could it could be just me that I think they're too small, but I don't know. It's probably not. You can actually, see, you can see the microphone there at the bottom. Whoa! Yeah, that was too big. Goodness. Okay. So we'll turn them down. Uh, to there. Maybe that works. Good grief. That is really, that is really blinding. Yeah, they're saying you can see the microphone right there that I set. I thought I set it out of frame. Okay, see that's better. It's a little bit brighter than what we had, but it's not as bright. Okay, so let's put this on top, and then we'll turn the factor down to let's say 0.5. So it's going to be um, a little bit see-through. It's not going to be as um, it won't look as though we just pasted it on there. Yeah, that kind of looks better. Alright. So yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, we'll just add a, uh, actually, just for fun, we'll add a letterbox on here. 
Um, actually, we'll take. Uh, we'll just do this. Mix. Multiply. Add. Under. I have one preset. Letterbox two three nine. And once it composites, because lens flares, unless they're CGI generated, um, if you see it on a 16 by 9 video, it's either cropped from an anamorphic lens, so it looks, uh, the footage from an anamorphic lens is cropped down to a 16 by 9, or it's just a CGI lens flare. In this case, it is a CGI lens flare, but we're just having fun with it. So there. That's how you make lens flares better looking lens flares than the first tutorial in Blender. And you can experiment with how you want these broken up elements to look. You can have a flare coming from the light itself and then have these in there to um, complement it. Uh, that looks good too. But I personally like the one that's just broken up. Because it looks a lot more sci-fi. I don't know. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Um, hope you have fun trying to make this yourself.